Hey everybody, it's Atheist for the Cause here with another video for you, another special report, and that's because we have some really big information um, that has come out from the um, Intercept. It says, Top Secret NSA Report Details Russian Hacking Effort Days Before 2016 Election. Um, and basically what happened, I'm going to try to go over this somewhat quickly, is there is um, this girl, Reality Winner her name is, um, leaked information f out of Georgia that was, uh, she was an NSA contractor and um, she leaked it to the Intercept and they allegedly gave the information to the NSA and then leaked what she leaked them. It sounds to me from what I'm reading is that she sent the intercept the um, information, the leaked documents, and then I think the intercept made a deal that they would turn her over if the NSA would let them release the information and they would agree to allow, allow it to be somewhat redacted. And um, I think that was uh, a win-win and kind of threw a reality winner under the bus. And um, WikiLeaks is pretty upset to say the least. They issued ten th a $10,000 reward for information leading to the public exposure and termination of the reporter. Um, it says, uh, suspected intercept reporter gave U.S. government NSA whistleblower reality lay winner's postcode printout and her report number. Um, on or about May 24th, 2017, a reporter for the news outlet, the reporter, um, known as the reporter in this, contacted another U.S. government agency affiliate with whom he has a prior relationship. This individual works for a contractor for the U.S. government, the contractor, for this document. The reporter contacted, and this would be the intercept. The reporter is the intercept. The contractor is the reality calls, or a uh, reality call, reality uh, winner. Uh, the reporter contacted the contractor via text message and asked him to review certain documents. The reporter told the contractor that the reporter had received the documents through the through the mail and they were postmarked Augusta, Georgia. Winner resides in Augusta, Georgia. The reporter believed that the documents were sent to him from someone working at the location where Winner works. The reporter took pictures of the documents and sent them to the contractor. Um, so there you have that. The reporter asked the contractor to determine the veracity of the documents. Veracity. Uh, the contractor informed the reporter that he thought that the documents were fake. Nonetheless, the contractor contacted the U.S. government agency on or about June 1st, 2017 to inform the U.S. government agency of his interaction with the reporter. Also on June 1st, 2017, the reporter texted the contractor and said that a U.S. government agency official had verified that the document was real. When questioned about what intelligence report number was associated with the images on his phone, the contractor supplied the reporting number associated with the intelligence reporting in issue. Now this would be, I don't know if it was, it almost sounds, the way it's written here, it sounds like it's a mistake by the independent reporter or uh, by the Intercept reporter, but um, I mean, that's a pretty big mistake. Did they not realize they were giving up their source? And, um, but it, some interesting stuff is, uh, so WikiLeaks did some digging and found that um, back in November of 2016, um, the accused NSA source, Reality Lay Winner Facebook post, shows a signed image of CNN's Anderson Cooper. 
says parting gift from my office. I have the best coworkers ever. Reality. Thank you for your service. Love, Anderson Cooper. Kind of interesting. Remember, he's CIA. He literally worked for the CIA. That's why he did that show, The Mole. Cause, and, you know, now he works with uh, CNN. Because he was perfect for a reality TV show that was about... Um, what was it about even? It, it was like doing investigations and stuff like that. Figuring out, you know, there was... I don't know, it was like a game show thing. It was pretty pretty good show but it's been a while since I saw it so but anyways um so it says um Russian military intelligence executed a cyber attack on at least one US voting software supplier and sent uh, spear phishing emails to more than a hundred local election officials just days before the La before last November's presidential election, according to a highly classified intelligence report obtained by The Intercept. The top secret National Service Agency document, which was provided anonymously to The Intercept and independent, uh, auth independently authenticized, analyzes intelligence very recently acquired by the agency about a month long ago Russian intelligence cyber effort against elements of the U.S. election and voting infrastructure. The reporter dated uh, May 5, 2017 as the worst detailed U.S. government account of Russian interference in election and has yet to, uh, in this election that has yet come to light. While the document provides a rare window into the NSA's understanding of the mechanics of Russian hacking, it does not show the underlying raw intelligence on whether the analysis is based. A U.S. intelligence officer who declined to be identified cautioned against drawing too big of a conclusion from the document because a single analysis is not necessarily definitive. And I just want to point out, the media is already saying, oh, say Russia, Russia hacked the election. Because they already had that narrative going, and this is like the closest thing they're going to get. But as um, you see, as this guy's going to say, they still don't have the evidence that Russia actually hacked voting machines or anything like that um, in regards to changing votes. So um, l let's listen to this video, and then I'll get back to the article. This Thursday, the Senate Intelligence Committee questions former FBI Director James Comey on what the president said to him about loyalty, about General Michael Flynn, and about whether the FBI was investigating the president. It's all about the Russians and what they were up to in 2016 and what role, if any, Donald Trump's people may have played in encouraging them. As our guest tonight, we have the American, the Associated Press has called a key figure in the controversy, Carter Page. Page will join us shortly, but first to the news just breaking late today. The news site The Intercept is reporting that the Russian military intelligence group executed a cyber attack stuff. on at least one U.S. voting software supplier, according to a highly classified intelligence report. The report indicates that Russian hacking may have penetrated further into the U.S. voting systems than was previously understood. In fact, just an hour after the story was posted, authorities announced the arrest of the contractor who allegedly leaked that report, according to NBC News. Joining me now is Ken Delaney, intelligence reporter with NBC News. By the way, I know a lot of people like all of these leaks and stuff, but the U.S. has had so many leaks that it is a problem. You know, between um, Love and uh, Bradley and Snowden and um, I think I'm missing. Uh, well, Assange isn't really a leaker, but he's published. A lot of low leaker stuff and there's been some other leakers I'm blanking on right now um, but uh, um, there it is a problem that all this information is constantly leaked Ken, tell us what the meaning does this mean that the Russians were trying to manipulate the voting itself the counting of the vote there's no evidence of that Chris Actually, I've been checking in with intelligence sources, and they say that this document, while interesting, doesn't tell them a whole lot. Remember, this is MSNBC. 
and he just said there's no evidence that uh, Russia hacked the election. They didn't already know. It just adds further details that the Russians were trying to hack into the voter registration system. So this document uh, alleges that they sent voter example, 100 spear. He said voter registration system. That's not the same as actually going in and changing votes. They're just getting like information on, you know, the database is where the registration information is held. That's what they're going after. So they could maybe like get names and addresses and stuff like that of where people live, you know, and that kind of information. They could like potentially remove people from um, from registration lists so that they can't actually vote. But it's thought that that didn't um, happen on uh, li like Russia didn't actually follow through with doing anything major. Fishing attempts to election officials, you know, trying to get into their systems. By the way, he just said spear phishing attempts. Um, I looked it up. Spear phishing is the same thing as phishing. It's just um, when they do the phishing, they make it look like it's somebody you know. So let's say someone, they sent a malicious email to you and like said it was your mom or something that needed to talk to you. And so then you opened it up and said, hey, it's mom, I need your password for something. That would be a spear phishing attempt. And that they right. actually successfully hacked a contractor that worked on voter registration systems. And what's interesting here is it appears that the Russians could have done a lot more to wreak havoc on Election Day by, for example, changing voter registration files so that when people showed up to vote, they weren't allowed to vote. But that didn't happen. See? We're not completely That's sure why it didn't happen. But just to be clear, this document. He's not sure why it didn't happen. I can tell you why. Because Russia wasn't actually interested in trying to change the election results. Um, like you're trying to say, like, you know, I, I think they're trying to test the waters and see what they can do, but, um, potentially if Russia did meddle and I'm still not completely convinced to be honest that they did, but, um, um, there, that would be a serious move to actually like take people off the registration list and stuff. And even then people could get provisional ballots and things like that to vote. So, um, it wouldn't necessarily have the desired conclusion that they would want or effect. Makes no allegations about any changing of votes. And they say that actually the outcome of this. No allegations of changing of votes by Russia. This is the intelligence community that's saying this. Pack is unclear. Okay, but, Kendall, anything? Go ahead, I'm sorry. And he just said it's unclear, you know, what was actually changed, you know, how the election was actually impacted. You no, know, I was just the other fascinating thing, of course, is an hour after the story hits, the Justice Department announces charges against a 25 year old contractor. Mm -hmm. Now, the charges don't say she was the leaker, but we've confirmed through our sources that this this woman who worked for the NSA and was a linguist, apparently spoke Dari and Pashto, 25 years old, had just gotten a clearance, mailed this document to the intercept. So just a remarkable story. All well, Jake or Hooper would be very proud. Thank you so much, Ken Delaney. <laughs> So that's that, uh, and as you can see, uh, everything he said, Hill isn't I'll be posting all of this information in the description as I usually do, but everything he said uh, is basically nothing's confirmed, or what is confirmed isn't like direct changing of votes or anything like that. They didn't actually change the effect on the election or the result of the election, they didn't really even have an impact on the election in terms of this, uh, what they're talking about here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if um, this is the crap Hillary Clinton was doing during the primaries, because remember all those um, Democrats had their uh, registration removed? Kind of interesting, isn't it? Maybe this is what Clinton was doing during the Democratic primaries. 
and she knew she couldn't get away with it during the the general election because um there was the UN had showed up and you know you have the republicans watching it and uh it was made such a big deal and so much attention was drawn to it i think people would have realized if if massive amounts of people were being removed but during a democratic primary it's not as big of a deal um so back to this it says um you can see here's part of what was leaked the report indicates the Russian hacking may have penetrated further into U.S. voting systems than was previously understood. It states unequivocally in its summary statement that it was Russian military intelligence, specifically the Russian General Staff Main Intelligence Directorate, or GRU. Um, that's not actually true. I'll uh, show you why. That conducted the cyber attacks uh, described in the document. Russian General Staff Main Intelligence Director, uh, Director Actress executed cyber espionage operations against a named U.S. company in August of 2016, evidently to obtain information on elections-related software and hardware solutions. The actors likely used data obtained from the, that operation to launch a voter registration themed spear phishing campaign targeting U.S. local government organizations. Um, the NSA summary judgment, and remember this is way back in August of 2016, so this, this is quite a long time ago. Uh, the, this NSA summary judgment is sharply at odds with the Russian President Vlad Vladimir Putin's denial last week that Russia had interfered in foreign elections. We never engaged in that on a state level and have no intention of doing so. Putin had previously, Putin, I mean Russia does lie a lot. Putin had previously issued blanket denials that any such Russian meddling occurred for the first time floated the possibility that freelance Russian hackers with patriotic leanings may have been responsible. Isn't this what a lot of us who say Russia didn't hack the elections? This is what we have always said is that, you know, just because, especially with uh, collusion and stuff too, um, just because, you know, someone in the Trump campaign talked to a Russian doesn't mean that they're guilty of something, of like collusion or anything like that. Um, and just because a Russian hacks into something doesn't mean that it's done on the state level either. The NSA report, on the contrary, displays no doubt that the cyber assault was carried out by the GRU. Uh, the NSA, and um, I just, I'll skip down here. So uh, I th this is a, a lot of what they're talking about. Spear phishing campaign, TTPs used against U.S. and foreign government policy political entities, and I'm not going to go through it all. You can look at it later if you want, but um, basically, if you look, a green line is confirmed information, yellow line analyst judgment, gray line contextual information. So um, they have the operators, um, and it says probably within, it's redacted. And this is a yellow line, so the, this is an analyst judgment. And then contextual information uh, makes it within the GRU, um, wh whatever this is, within the GRU. So um, they're basically guessing and deducing. It's it's not that they know that these operators that were doing this phishing are necessarily from the GRU. Although um, it does have the, the GRU circle in green. But um, everything connecting it is in uh, yellow or contextual. So just keep that in mind when they're saying, oh, it's... It's definitely this or definitely that. 
Um, the NSA and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence were both contacted for this article. Officials requested that we not publish the report. Um, and then the report adds significant new detail to the picture that emerged from the unclassified intelligence assessment about Russian election meddling released by the Obama administration in January. The January assessment pre presented the U.S. intelligence community's conclusions but omitted many specifics, <laughs> citing concerns about disclosing sensitive sources and methods. The assessment concluded with high confidence that the Kremlin ordered... You always have to be uh, uh, skeptical when they use uh, very Russian terms, too, especially going back to the Soviet days like the Kremlin, KGB, things like that. Because um, a lot of times they're trying to play up emotionalism and make it sound really bad. The Kremlin ordered an extensive multi-pronged propaganda effort to undermine public faith in the U.S. democratic processes, denigrate Secretary Clinton, and harm her electability and potential presidency. Well, I'll in order to de denigrate Clinton, all you had to do was uh, put a microphone up to her mouth. And that pretty much does it all. Um, but seriously, of course they're going to like be doing some of this stuff. But that doesn't say anything about Trump or collusion or anything like that. So the Russians may have preferred Trump. Um, I don't think anybody denies that. But uh, Trump, to t say that Trump has is missing legitimacy or something like that or colluded, um, that's just not the truth. That review did not attempt to assess what effect the Russian efforts had on the election. And I think that's actually the truth, the, the real story here is what did Russia actually do? What can they actually do to to our elections? Not only this election, but the future elections. Mainly future elections. But instead, they're making it all about Trump. And I think that's actually damaging to um, informing the public about what could be done and what we have to worry about, you know? Um, because this whole Trump thing is a witch hunt. And there's nothing to it. So it says, uh, That review did not attempt to assess what effect the Russian efforts had on the election, despite the fact that Russian intelligence obtained and uh, maintained ex access to elements of multiple U.S. state or local electoral boards. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the assessment reported reassuringly the types of systems we observed Russian actors targeting or compromising are not involved in vote tallying. Right there. The types of systems we observed Russian actors targeting or compromising are not involved in vote tallying. It's all in vote registration. The NSA has now learned, however, that Russian con government hackers, part of a team with a cyber espionage mandate specifically directed at U.S. and foreign elections, focused on parts of the system directly connected to voter registration process, including a private sec sector manufacturer of devices that maintain and verify the voter rolls. Some of the company's devices are advertised as having wireless internet and Bluetooth con connectivity, which could have provided an ideal staging point for further malicious actions. So um, then it gets into the spear phishing attack. I'm not going to go over all this because this is a really long story. Um, the luring target, I went over most of the juicy stuff. so. If you want to read the rest of this, um, I'll here I'll read this bit because it's actually from the. Um, this is the top secret information. It says Russia Cybersecurity Main Intelligence Directorate Cyber Actors redacted target U.S. companies and local U.S. government officials using voter registration themed emails 
spoof election related products and services, research absentee ballot email addresses, August to November 2016. Um, so you know you can see how long this is you can read the rest um by clicking in the description but all you're gonna hear is you know ms or uh you heard the, on msnbc that guy talking about how you can't conclude that russian hacked the russia hacked the elections or had any sort of impact on the elections and he got that from intelligence communities um but at the same time, like, the mainstream media is still going to be pushing the fact that, you know, th they're going to try to be pushing a narrative of Russia hacked the elections. That's the narrative they've already been pushing. And, you know, they're not going to have a better chance to justify that than now. And they're going to try to say, I told you so. But really, uh, they're never going to be able to to honestly say they told us so because Russia didn't hack the elections. They didn't change votes or anything like that. So Trump is our legitimate president. He didn't collude with the Russians. There's no evidence that he did. And the more that stuff like this comes out and doesn't show Trump guilty of anything, doesn't show that Russia actually changed the elections or anything, the more I'm confident that it just didn't happen. And um, because why would you leak something that doesn't really prove that the elections were hacked or anything like that? So, um, so just take that into consideration as well. If there was some hard evidence, then they would release it. And I think we know now why the NSA hasn't been re releasing the evidence about Trump collusion because it doesn't show collusion. This is what they have. This uh, this leaked information is straight from the NSA. So anyways, um, have a good one, guys. And uh, keep your ears open because this is going to get nonstop media attention for weeks.